imagine a time when the average global temperature on Earth was around 30 degrees Celsius and there were even palm trees growing on Antarctica. This is what the Earth was like about 56 million years ago. This was the Paleocene Eocene Thermal Maximum, one of the hottest events in time that the Earth has ever seen, lasting 100,000 years of the Cenozoic Era. There was little variation in temperature across the globe, and oceans were as hot as 23 degrees. This stopped the cycle of ocean circulation, leaving the seas stagnant. The ocean acidified and began dissolving the calcium carbonate tests of benthic foraminifera. These were single-celled microorganisms that lived on the sea floor. At this point, carbon could no longer be precipitated into marine sediment. The major carbon sink in the ocean stopped because of the ocean acidification, which only intensified global warming. Rather than having definitive seasons, they became less obvious and began to overlap. The world stayed warm for long periods of time. This increased heat caused the oceans to absorb more carbon dioxide, which acidified the water further. Carbon dioxide, or CO2, is a greenhouse gas that can take thousands to ten thousands of years to break down. CO2 gas traps heat from the sun, making the atmosphere act like a blanket, which helps to create the greenhouse effect. It is estimated that up to a thousand parts per million of carbon dioxide were released during the early Eocene. That's the same as burning the entire fossil fuel reservoir of today. The formation of CO2 occurred through microorganisms metabolizing at the bottom of the ocean and depositing methane hydrates. Methane hydrates are ice-like crystals made of methane that dissolve and release CO2 at high temperatures. CO2 also entered the Earth through volcanic activity. Water vapour warmed the Earth by increasing the greenhouse effect. The acidic seas evaporated, forming dense clouds of water vapour that brought rainfall and humidity to land. Many species that existed during the PETM only survived during this time. The Eocene period began 56 million years ago, with the word Eocene meaning dawn in Greek. The epoch was given this title as the dawn of modern fauna because many early forms that exist today started appearing during this time. On land, faunal interchange happened. Animals migrated between Antarctica, Australia, North America and Asia as the climate didn't vary and land bridges remained between continents. Plants spread further and further towards the poles, but the greenhouse gases reduced their chlorophyll production needed for photosynthesis. Less photosynthesis meant the plants were less nutritious. Many species, particularly primitive mammals, experienced dwarfism becoming smaller than their ancestors. Their small size was an efficient way for warm-blooded creatures to stay cool. Intense warming of the earth and new ecosystem conditions drove rapid evolution. Eohippus, one of the first horses, appears at the beginning of the Eocene. It was the size of a cat with short limbs. Elephants also appeared in the early Eocene. They started out at just one meter tall with a shortened trunk. This was amazing considering they would later become mighty mastodons and mammoths. One of the first rhinos, known as Hyracheus, was around 1.8 meters tall. It resembled a modern tapir, but its teeth show its relations to rhinos. It is thought the PETM came to an end with an Azola event 49 million years ago. Blooms of fern-like plants developed in the warm Arctic oceans, and as they sank, sequestered or buried carbon in the sea floor. Global temperatures declined, and seasonality returned around the globe. Forces were at work deep beneath the Earth's crust, pulling the ancient supercontinent Gondwana apart. The creation of Drake's Passage between South America and Antarctica also occurred, as well as the movement of Australia away from Antarctica. The circumpolar thermohaline current began sinking cold, nutrient-rich water off the coast of Antarctica. 
This water travelled northwards in the deep sea, pushed forward by more warm water cooling and sinking around Antarctica. This boosted primary productivity in the sea. These events lower temperatures, but they would still fluctuate to near PETM levels over the next few million years, a time known as the Eocene Optimum. Open savanna grasslands and temperate forests emerged with deciduous and coniferous vegetation. Mountain building due to continental plate collisions removed CO2 through chemical weathering which caused cooling. These newly formed mountain chains created rain shadows over continental interiors. This led to further drying and encouraged the further spread of grasslands. At this point, Earth was entering an ice house climate known as the Eocene Oligocene cooling event. Permanent ice caps formed at the poles, which was a pivotal point at which the Earth switched from a hothouse to an ice house planet. Animals experienced giganticism. There was a lot of evidence for this in the paleontological record. For instance, the largest ever known land mammal, the Paraceratherium, a relative of the first rhino, reached 5 meters in height and weighed 17 tons. Elephants became much larger, such as the Dinotherium, which reached heights of almost 4 meters. Horses, such as the Myohippus, grew to be nearly a meter in height. Animal brain sizes increased, driven by a need for greater cognition, which was needed to adapt to the increasingly complex environments. The Eocene Oligocene mass extinction caused the death of many Eocene animals. The event is thought to have been caused by volcanic activity, meteorite strikes, and rising sea level. Understanding the effects of the PETM is important today as humans succeed in the Anthropocene. Due to burning fossil fuels, we are causing a rapid increase in global temperatures which are becoming more alarming by the year. We are entering a modern thermal maximum, and with everything we know about the PETM, the only question that remains is will we survive?